And we're now close to entering the final countdown for the launch of the last flight of Space Shuttle Endeavour on mission STS-134. This is the 134th launch of the Space Shuttle program, the 25th launch of Space Shuttle Endeavour, and the 36th flight to the International Space Station. Endeavour will deliver the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer, called AMS-2, a particle physics detector designed to search for various types of unusual matter by measuring cosmic rays. Its experiments are designed to help researchers study and look for clues to the formation of the universe. And here is Commander Mark Kelly, our 134 mission commander, making his fourth flight on the space shuttle. He's uh, logged a total of 38 days in space. His latest flight was in 2008 on uh, STS-124. Going over to our pilot now, Greg Johnson. He's making his second space flight, previously also piloted on STS-123 in 2008. He's logged over 4,000 hours in 40 different type of aircraft. This is Mike Fink, mission specialist number one. This is his third space flight, but his first space shuttle flight. He was launched previously from Russia on Soyuz spacecraft, and he's logged 365 days in space with over 26 hours on six spacewalks. Mission specialist Greg Shamatov. This is his second space flight, but he's already logged 183 days in space aboard the space station. He's Canadian-born from Montreal. And there's Drew Foistel, mission specialist number three, making his second trip into space. He served as uh, an astronaut for more than a decade, working on both the space shuttle and the uh, space station branches in Houston. He flew on the fifth and final HST servicing mission. And Roberto Vittori, he's mission specialist number two. He was selected as an astronaut by the European Space Agency. He's from Viterbo, Italy. And he has flown to the International Space Station twice. And here come our astronauts leaving the suit-up room bound for the elevator. They will take them down to the astronaut van, the Astrovan. This is the same elevator that all astronauts since Apollo have used to leave the crew quarters and go out to the launch pad. And NTD, your, your polls go. Is that affirmative? That is affirmative. We are all go. Okay, copy that. KC, Chief Processing Engineer, verify no constraints to launch. No constraints. Thank you, Steve. KC, Safety and Mission Assurance. KC, Safety and Mission Assurances go. Thank you, Dave. Payload Launch Manager. Mike, Space Station Processing Team go. Thank you, Bill. Range Weather. Weather has no constraints to launch. Thank you, Kathy. And Ops Manager. Mike, things look real good today. Thanks to your team for getting us back here. Uh, you're a good launch endeavor. Good. Thank you, sir. Endeavor Launch Director, Air to Ground One. Go ahead. Okay, Mark, looks like a great day to uh, launch Endeavor for the final time. So on behalf of the thousands of proud Americans who have been part of her journey, good luck, Godspeed, and we'll see you back here June 1st. Thank you, sir. On this uh, final flight of Space Shuttle Endeavor, we want to thank all the tens of thousands of dedicated employees that have put their hands on this incredible ship and dedicated their lives to the space shuttle program. As Americans, we endeavor to build a better life than the generation before, and we endeavor to be a united nation. In these efforts, we are often tested. This mission represents the power of teamwork, commitment, and exploration. It is in the DNA of our great country to reach for the stars and explore. We must not stop. To all of the millions watching today, including our spouses, children, family and friends, 
We thank you for your support. Endeavor OTC, it's your final voyage. This is both a sad and proud moment for your launch team and for America, but your legacy will live on. Mission success with AMS, a truly international effort. Godspeed and see you back in a couple of weeks. Endeavor copies, thanks for the words, appreciate it. Endeavor OTC, close and lock your visors, initiate O2 flow. Endeavor and work. Go for main engine start. Eight, seven, six, four, three, two, zero, and lift off for the final launch of Endeavor, expanding our knowledge, expanding our lives in space. Houston Endeavor, roll program. Roger roll, Endeavor. Houston is now controlling. Endeavor beginning to over onto its uh, back, the roll program on the way as uh, Endeavour begins the heads down position on course for a 51.6 degree, 136 by 36 statute mile orbit. Three engines now throttling down as Endeavour uh, passes through the area of maximum dynamic pressure on the vehicle in the lower atmosphere. And standing by for separation of the solid rocket boosters. Orbiter is now traveling 3,200 miles per hour, downrange 50 miles, altitude 37 miles. All systems in good shape. Endeavor, press to Miko and single engine Zaragoza 104. Roger, press to Miko, single engine Zaragoza 104. Several calls there. Endeavour can reach a safe orbit on two engines now. The guidance system is controlling the engines to roll Endeavour to a heads-up position to optimize the air-to-ground communications through the satellite network. Okay, Ohm's burn starting in five seconds. About now. Here we go. Here we go. Oh. <laughs> That's a real burn. Go. It's a long burn. We can oh. do that again. You're right. There it goes. There's, yeah, that's like a tenth of a G. Right. Where's your other boot, by the way? It's tied off. <laughs> Start of payload bay door opening. Payload bay door is uh, it's, uh, ongoing. It looks like uh, dual motor time. All right, here we are in the flight deck of Endeavour, flight day one, recently in space. Sorry about the cloud deck when we took off. <laughs> We're really excited. It's great to be up here. I'll have to say it was uh, a lot different than uh, flying on the Soyuz. And back to work. Go ahead. Hey, guys. Here we are, Roberto and I. We're on the mid-deck. We're setting up uh, GIRA, which is our water purification system over here. And uh, we've been in space now for what? Four hours? Five hours? Something like that. And um, amazingly, we're all feeling great. It's, uh, this is awesome. I, just, I can't wait to get back to the space station. And uh, feeling just awesome. Roberto? My first ride on the shuttle was uh, an amazing launch. And then Miko. Uh, 
I was a little afraid, but uh, got quickly adapted. And uh, uh, it's very interesting to work with uh, old shallow systems. And I need to say that uh, it's easier here in microgravity than it was in the, in the, during the training tour. Most of the, most of the equipment here just makes sense. It's, uh, it is very intuitive and uh, happy to be here. The day's activities will uh, focus primarily on the inspection of the uh, thermal protection system, uh, in, in particular the wing leading edge uh, reinforced carbon-carbon panels, 22 of which are on each wing of the orbiter, and also the nose cap uh, made of the same material. Uh, all of that inspection uh, will take uh, over the course of the uh, cruise timeline several hours. Uh, the starboard wing uh, will be the first uh, survey that's uh, budgeted for uh, uh, just under two hours. The crew will then break for a midday meal and then uh, perform the inspection of the nose cap and then uh, kick off the left wing survey. Once all of that uh, is completed, the uh, robotic arm will then uh, be used to stow the uh, boom back along the uh, right sill of the orbiter's payload bay and then uh, move on to the task of uh, grappling the uh, uh, express logistics carrier, which is in the uh, forward, or actually the mid portion of Endeavour's payload bay. A bunch of viruses in these tubes. Frank, turn a handle, take these there tubes up, We're getting audio now. and it mixes, uh, does some mixture, and later will deactivate it. Got a bunch of them in here. It kind of takes a while. Two more to go. All right. The rip go by. You are over South China Sea. South China Sea, wow. Well, a lot of airplanes are flying trailing today. All right. You guys look great. <laughs> was, you know why I'm wearing these? Because it looks cool. It looks cool. Hey, I've got a pair of those. <laughs> Elbow wrist boom. Elbow That's wrist boom. Former movie. Elbow wrist boom. That's our job. Elbow, elbow wrist boom. <laughs> just rocking out on the mic deck. Hey, it's just amazing that you can see the entire arm using windows only. Yeah. You don't have to use the uh, TV monitors like we had to do on station at one time. It doesn't look like a simulation anymore when you're not looking at monitors. Oh, the sim simulation the graphics are pretty good. Yeah. I think these, uh, are gra these graphics are graphics even better. better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know how old the shrimp is, but it seems too fresh. That's an asparagus. Yeah. Hey, I want that asparagus. That's some fiesta chicken. That's the best stuff. <laughs> And uh, views of uh, Space Shuttle Endeavour from the International Space Station cameras on the outside of the complex. This view uh, from a distance of 50,800 feet. The uh, trajectory control sensor has acquired the target. We think uh, MC3 is a no-burn. We concur, Endeavour. And with that uh, call, the third uh, mid-course correction burn uh, is not required based on the trajectory of uh, Endeavour to the International Space Station. All right. Okay. I'm going to go throw an S. I'm going to schedule it up on top of the I'll be careful. Ready? Initiating RPM on my mark. Three, two, one, mark. Endeavour is now uh, 310 feet from the International Space Station. Flight Director Gary Horlocker now um, 
pulling his flight control team here in the shuttle flight control room for a go for docking. The crew, meanwhile, is in the process of powering up uh, the orbiter docking system. View of the uh, orbiter docking system with the ring extended. That obviously is the first contact with the docking port on the International Space Station. The station's docking port, the pressurized mating adapter attached to the Harmony module of the International Space Station at the top of the view. You also see the European Space Agency uh, laboratory. Coordinating shirts. <laughs> we, didn't, we didn't do that. It's okay. <laughs> Paulo, how's it going? How are you? Good. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Thank Welcome. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> 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 pretty good. Welcome, Dad. Oh, how are you? How are you? Good to see you. Good to see you. How are you doing? Hi, Paulo. Hi, buddy. Hello. How are you doing? Good to see you guys. Good to see you guys. Thank you. 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 Moving away from the Space Shuttle's cargo bay and uh, beginning to be able to see as well the alpha magnetic spectrometer in the back of the cargo bay, the main uh, cargo brought up by Endeavour for this mission. And Houston, this is the cupola. The UMA mate is complete, and with that, Congratulations to the whole team, and uh, special thanks to the guys on the shuttle side, uh, Mike and Roberto. Uh, the ELC-3 is successfully installed. Are the crew aboard Space Shuttle Endeavour is uh, awake and uh, busily preparing for its day, which uh, uh, the focus of attention of which is the uh, installment of the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer, the primary payload of the mission, onto its permanent home uh, on the International Space Station out on the S-3 uh, truss structure, the S-3 uh, segment of the International Space Station. The uh, shuttle's robotic arm now has the brakes on. It's uh, in the position now for the handoff. Uh, next up will be for the uh, station robotic arm uh, to maneuver over to the AMS and capture the other grapple fixture. And Canada Arm 2 now uh, being maneuvered from a robotic workstation inside the cupola to uh, capture the alpha magnetic spectrometer currently in the firm grasp of the shuttle's robotic arm. SRMS grapple is complete. Put the brakes on, and you guys are go for SRMS release. The uh, AMS is being positioned to its uh, final location, uh, about one foot away. Taz, 
Jones, this is Box. Maneuvers to RTLs is complete. Your go for first phase capture. Very well done, Box. We're ready for first phase capture. You're looking over the shoulder of uh, Shuttle Commander Mark Kelly as he attaches the uh, simplified aid for EVA rescue, the SAFER device, which is essentially a, um, a, a device with, that holds uh, compressed uh, gas, compressed nitrogen that allows uh, crew members, if they inadvertently became untethered uh, from the station uh, and uh, floated away from the complex could actually activate the safer device and uh, fly themselves back to the uh, confines, the safety of the uh, space station. First out of the hatch is uh, Drew Foistel. Guys, I'm out of your way. Okay. Watch the uh, wire tie there with the MMOD. Looking good. Just like the pool. Whoa. <laughs> Keep it just like the pool for a while and it'll all look good. <laughs> yeah, uh, Drew, I just wanted to say uh, welcome back to uh, Open Space and Taz. Uh, congratulations on being the 201st human being to uh, be in uh, outer space. I waited a long time to say those words to you. Congratulations. Thanks, Big Spanky. As you know, it's a dream come true for me. Drew, good checks. Uh, you are to continue outboard to Bay 19, and you are going to stow your CETA bag on S3 handrail 3046 and 3038. Drew Foistel, you see, uh, carrying the materials ISS experiment or retrieved that will be returned home. He's uh, going to put that in the shuttle's payload bay. The uh, stowage of the Missy 7 experiment that, that has been located on the station, that experiment is coming home. The view of uh, Drew Foistel. It's seated in the bottom as far down as it'll go. Is it against the back? Greg Chamatoff uh, making his way back out to the uh, port side of the truss to uh, assist Drew Foistel with the jumper installation, the ammonia jumper installation. And Greg, I have a note here uh, that we wrote after our last run uh, for you to mind the rest. In correction, that is actually Shamatov. He is uh, working to uh, install one of the handrails with the camera already integrated onto it. Each of those handrails is hit is held down by two bolts. Get a good view of how these uh, antennas are installed. You can see how they're integrated onto the handrails that the astronauts use to move around the station. Uh, crew lock portion of the Quest airlock, which is what the uh, spacewalkers actually exit the station from, is actually rather small. It's a bit of a stretch to get both the spacewalkers and all their equipment into it, and so the um, intravehicular crew uh, has to be on hand to help them both in and out of that portion of the airlock. Lucia, the EVA glove photos will be on SSC-8. They're copying now in about four minutes. Copy, SSC-8.
And with that uh, orbiter boom sensor system on the end of the robot arm, it's uh, looking all the way across the underside of the vehicle over toward the right side. It actually will be positioned with the uh, laser camera system pointed uh, about seven feet or so away from the area of uh, interest. And this is the uh, view of the damage area that uh, the tile that uh, crosses essentially over a couple of tiles. This area is uh, between the right main landing gear door and the external tank door. We find it Check the MCC to for the field of view. Okay. Relax. Ground high res. I'm wondering if that's uh, okay to do as opposed to... It's standing. There's no arm the, motion. Uh, that's the key. The there are five different uh, scan locations, and this is the second of those five. Again, the different uh, angles will allow the uh, damage assessment team to uh, provide a uh, very detailed uh, three-dimensional uh, image after gathering all of this data on the ground. Welcome aboard the space station, Your Holiness. Dear astronauts, I'm very happy to have this extraordinary opportunity to converse with you during your mission. I'm especially grateful to be able to speak to so many of you as both crews are present on the space situation of this time. Humanity is experiencing a period of extremely rapid progress in the face of scientific knowledge and technical applications. In a sense, you are our representatives spearheading humanity's exploration of new spaces and possibilities for our future, going beyond the limitations of our everyday existence. We all admire your courage, as well as the discipline and commitment with which you prepared yourselves for this mission. We are convinced you are inspired by noble ideals and that you intend placing the results of your research and endeavors at the disposal of all humanity and for the common good. This conversation gives me the chance to express my own admiration and appreciation to you and to also to collaborate in making your mission possible and to add my heartfelt encouragement to bring it to a safe and successful conclusion. The uh, crew members inside the Quest airlock preparing for the uh, second EVA extravehicular activity. The uh, two crew members heading out the door are uh, being assisted by Greg Chamatoff and Shuttle Commander Mark Kelly with uh, all of their preparatory activities ahead of the uh, spacewalk. The two uh, astronauts are uh, heading out to the uh, work site. They're heading out to the port side of the station's truss structure to uh, complete a task begun on EVA-1 two days ago, essentially to uh, and, uh, reconnect a jumper and, a, and, a, and then uh, flow about uh, five pounds or so of ammonia, basically to recharge the ammonia. Do you hear from... Mike Fink's helmet camera as he works on uh, lubricating the top surface of the race ring. To do the bottom surface, they'll have to use a special grease gun with a J-shaped nozzle to get under the race ring. It's currently under cover nine, one of four covers that they removed so they could lubricate underneath. Okay, stand by. To you from Mission Specialist Drew Foistel's helmet camera looking inside the uh, latching end effector of the Special Purpose Dexterous Manipulator, the, basically the hand of that robot, operating the space station's robotic arm, which is, uh, yeah. which is uh, holding Dexter in, uh, within um, Foistel's reach, is pilot Greg Johnson and flight engineer Katie Coleman. And... Okay. Good view here of how the uh, snares look when they are fully constructed. You can see the small uh, triangle they make in the center, which will close around um, items they're trying to pick up. Pilot Greg Johnson here, taking some photos inside the Quest airlock, ready to meet the spacewalkers as they uh, make their uh, return to the, to the inside of the space station. 
for Mission Specialist Drew Foistel with his five spacewalks, including two now at the space station. 35 hours and 24 minutes of spacewalking time for him. That puts him at 30th on the list of astronauts' time spent spacewalking. Fink is just behind him at 32nd on the list with his 34 hours and 19 minutes over seven spacewalks, the first of which uh, that was in a U.S. spacesuit was today, of course. And today's spacewalk was the 246th spacewalk by U.S. astronauts. It's uh, fairly quiet on board as the uh, Space Shuttle Endeavour crew is uh, officially off duty for a good bit of the day today. The International Space Station crew is scheduled to wake up about 5 a.m. Central Time, 6 this morning Eastern to begin a, uh, a busy day for the space station crew bidding farewell to three of the six crew members that make up Expedition 27. Endeavour is docked on the far end of the station and the Soyuz that's departing is on the Russian segment of the complex and there's been an exhaustive amount of uh, engineering analysis to uh, show that it is safe for the Soyuz to undock and depart while the space shuttle is docked to the station. And when it uh, does depart, uh, a little bit of extra timeline has been added into the schedule uh, before they, uh, the Soyuz departs the vicinity uh, for uh, some photo documentation of the configuration of the International Space Station with uh, Space Shuttle Endeavour uh, docked to the complex. crew has uh, restored several um, systems on board with the replacement of a failed uh, remote power controller module. After a, uh, a remote power controller uh, tripped on uh, Monday, that uh, caused the temporary loss of uh, some of the equipment uh, on board the station that uh, was recovered. Mike Fink re, uh, handled the removal and replacement of the RPCM, and uh, then the ground qu quickly uh, powered it up and reconfigured all of the systems, and they're all back uh, where they should be. It's essentially uh, very close to uh, having a fuse blow and then just having to replace that fuse here on the ground, uh, either in a car or uh, if a circuit breaker uh, popped in your home, uh, resetting that uh, in the case of the station it requires a replacement of a, of a piece of equipment, and that was done, and the systems are all back uh, where they were before the power uh, trip. Crew is focusing a good bit on today on replacing one of the, the uh, carbon dioxide removal assembly beds that uh, basically absorbs carbon dioxide and then uh, vents it overboard in a uh, continuous recycle um, to remove carbon dioxide from the cabin atmosphere of the International Space Station. There's Mike and Drew. Uh, we're setting up for EVA-3, which is tomorrow. And uh, there's a lot of work to prepare for an EVA each day. There's the suits have to be reconfigured and uh, prepared. And then we have a lot of tools to set up, uh, something that uh, they're handling right now is setting up um, it's an attachment mechanism for the station robotic arm and, uh, to be able to, to basically walk off to the Russian side of the uh, space station. Uh, our, our robotic arm can move from one place to another uh, end over end, and uh, this will allow us to uh, use our robotic arm for tasks on the Russian side of the space station. There you go, Sid. Yeah, so grab the other hand. Oh, sorry. There we go. Okay. There we go. Yeah, I, I was missing one. Good. Okay. Right. Well, there are three attached points for this new uh, power and data grapple fixture. Yeah, I see your safety tether clear. Excellent. Put one is in the seat. Number two snugged up. Nice and tight. Okay. All right. So, uh, Greg, the secondary lock on foot number two closed and locked. I'm giving you WVS views of everything. You can see everything's nice and snug, no cross threading, no troubles. Okay, great. I'm looking at number two. I see that very well. And I'll give you the same on number three. 
View here from Mission Specialist Drew Foistel's helmet camera as he begins working with some of the cables that have to be connected on the uh, uh, Russian end while uh, Mission Specialist Mike Feek has uh, moved on to begin routing the cable that uh, comes from the Harp, uh, Unity node end. And this adds redundancy to the Russian power supply at the station. Mission Specialist Drew Foistel also now out and being moved into place so that he can begin taking off that spacesuit as well. Today was his sixth space walk, his third at the International Space Station and for the STS-134 mission, and he adds that number to three that he also conducted during the STS-125 mission at the Hubble Space Telescope. And Houston uh, Endeavor on air to ground two. Looks like uh, we've got uh, our plan together, and uh, we're going to start uh, with the PDOS uh, dock plate inspection. Shuttle pilot Greg uh, Johnson calling down that uh, the crew is ready to get started with a uh, docked late inspection, ready to uh, perform its last uh, major task as a member of the uh, space shuttle STS-134 mission. It uh, will be delivered over to the International Space Station and become a permanent component of the ISS during the fourth of the spacewalks, the fourth and final spacewalk planned during Endeavour's mission. Shuttle Flight Director Gary Horlocker calling uh, on an internal loop to Flight Director Derek Hassman down the hall, giving him uh, permission now to take over the uh, orbiter boom sensor system, giving the uh, handoff permission for that uh, boom to become a permanent component of the International Space Station and essentially effectively be renamed the ISS Boom Assembly. Houston Endeavor. Go ahead, Endeavor. On behalf of the STS-134 crew and the Expedition 27 crew, Space Station Assembly is complete. Houston copies, thank you. Good view of the power and data grapple fixture now installed on what was the orbiter room sensor system and now will be known as the enhanced with this addition, International Space Station Boom Assembly. And a good view of the Destiny Laboratory directly below Shamatov connected to the Harmony module, which connects the uh, Destiny to the Japanese and European labs, Kibo and Columbus, and beyond that, Space Shuttle Endeavor. Now that's uh, almost done here, more things to do. Wanted to say a few words. This is the last flight of Space Shuttle Endeavor, and it's also the last spacewalk of, uh, shuttle, of shuttle crew members and for uh, station assembly. Kind of fitting that Endeavor is here. Because uh, Endeavour was the first shuttle to begin construction of the station, and so it's fitting that she's here for the last last uh, mission to uh, finish assembly. And um, during the CBA, we passed all together collectively over a thousand hours of spacewalks uh, as part of uh, station assembly. Mike and I have the uh, honor here to share this last spacewalk. And, uh, of course, with all the folks who worked on the ground, thousands of people who helped build us working in the shuttle and the station program, we're floating here on the shoulders of giants. This uh, space station the pinnacle of human achievement and uh, international cooperation. Twelve years in the building and 15 countries, and now it's the brightest star in the sky and hopefully the doorstep to our future. So congratulations, everybody, on Assembly Complete. Mission Specialist Greg Shanatoff now in the Quest airlock with Mike Fink, the last space shuttle crew member to conduct a spacewalk, now back inside the airlock. Hey, Mike, we just closed the hatch on that is a successful and safe EVAs for the shuttle program. In Station Houston on Space Ground 2 for Mike. Go ahead, procedure. And Mike, this is just for you. We wanted to congratulate you on breaking the duration record, 377 days and counting. Our hearty congratulations. Thanks, Lucia, and uh, thanks to all the uh, people I've flown with and all the folks who have uh, 
supported us from the ground. It's been a great uh, ride, but honestly, I hope this uh, record that we set here is going to get broken by uh, future people, and this will be uh, just a, uh, I guess, a ripple in the wind of uh, humans conquering space. So uh, for, for, for the moment, though, I'm going to enjoy it. Thanks for the congratulations. And it's been a real joy, and we also share that hope with you. Lucia, just so you know, Mike's planning to break that record tomorrow. Good deal. All right, guys. All right, yeah, show me a jump. Show me a jump. Here we go. All right. Both go. of you. Woo. Up you go. Here's a view from one of the windows in the cupola. Um, you can see, if you look at the earth, you can see this is the direction we're going. Uh, usually the station flies uh, with the U.S. side forward. This is the Russian side you're looking at, and we're upside down, basically. And while the shuttle's attached, that's the direction that we fly. And what you're looking at here is a progress vehicle. That's the um, Russian cargo vehicle. It's a fully automated rendezvous docking and then uh, burns up on entry uh, cargo vehicle. Um, there's a, you can back up uh, manual fly it from the service module and the service module, the command and control center for the Russian segment is back there. It's the next module. And then behind that is uh, is the European ATV, automated transfer vehicle. It's the one with the uh, solar panel that's going up at an angle there. And what you see here on top of the uh, FGV is a new Russian module. It's a research module. And uh, below the progress is called a docking compartment, or SOID. It's, you can see there's a little hatch on it with a window. There's one on the other side as well, and uh, they do their spacewalks from that module. So this is a, a module that used to fit inside the, uh, we had many of these that flew inside the shuttle cargo bay and brought up uh, logistics with it, and this one was modified to stay here permanently. So it's a very nice space, and we've been using it for our EVA preparations, and it's a lot of cargo in, uh, in there. It's a very nice uh, space to have. You're looking at the U.S. laboratory there. Attached to it is Dexter, the robot uh, from Canada. It's uh, it's also called SPDM, Special Purpose Dexterous Manipulator. It's got two arms, and it'll be able to do uh, re replacement tasks outside the station. As you can see, a couple of things attached to it. Of course, there's the shuttle and the Earth behind. Very beautiful. And then coming out the other side is the JAM, the Japanese Research Module. And in front of that is the JEF, the Japanese Exposed Facility, where a lot of research and experiments are, are conducted and there's a robotic arm sticking up there. You can see just the end of it, and uh, that arm can actually move things uh, in and out of an airlock at that end of the Japanese module. And you see the beautiful solar panels there, uh, 240 feet from tip to tip, um, extending out one side. Hugs and handshakes all around between the Expedition 28 crew members and those of the uh, Space Shuttle Endeavour crew. You heard they're talking first Commander Mark Kelly. He was followed by uh, Flight Engineer Ron Guerin and the Space Station Commander Andre Borisenko. was still there helping to uh, drag uh, some of the returning station crew members, Mike Fink and Greg Shamatoff, into the hatch. You just caught us closing the hatch. All and right, where are you in the procedure? Equalization We're valves done. are off. <laughs> <laughs> right in the end. <laughs> All right. Hey Drew, how's it going? It's going good, Box. We got the fiducial scale, so we're in good yeah. shape. <laughs> That's good. Perform Lyo change out for the cue card. Uh -oh. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Busy. Got here just in time. <laughs> All right. That's his closed box. We're going to be going home soon. You betcha. Endeavor Houston on the big loop. You are go for undocking.
Copy. We are go for undocking. Station is ready for undocking. Houston and station, we have physical separation. Houston copies. Endeavor uh, setting her sails one last time, uh, departing the International Space Station after 12 missions to the orbiting complex. Yeah, as we come up on about our 200th sunrise of the mission, we can see clearly see uh, AMS now on station and ELC-3. Uh, just want to congratulate the whole team on the ground and the Expedition 27 and 28 crews for all the hard work uh, that, that you guys have put into this. Uh, we're the ones that get to see this incredible view, um, but, you know, you're all with us in spirit, and this is really a new day for uh, science aboard the space station. So uh, thanks to all of you. Endeavor, thanks very much for the kind words. We'll pass the message, and it's a pleasure for us to be part of the team. As uh, Endeavor continues to uh, fly around the station, the International Space Station, uh, stretching 357 feet from tip to tip, the pressurized volume, uh, perpendicular volume there is about uh, 240 feet. At the bottom, the docking port from which uh, Endeavour departed the European Columbus Science Laboratory off to the left and the Japanese experiment module Kibo, the Japanese word for hope, off to the right. And then heading down the length of the volume, the Harmony connecting node to which those modules are attached in turn is attached to the U.S. Laboratory Destiny. Atop Destiny is the center point of that uh, 300, almost 360 de degree uh, or 60 foot long truss structure. And then the first U.S. element of the International Space Station launched uh, back in December of 1998. The Unity module is the connecting point uh, from the U.S. segment to the Russian segment of the station. Next in line, the first ever component of the International Space Station, the Zarya control module, with its uh, solar rays uh, uh, mostly retracted in accordion style. The Zvezda module on the back end is the, uh, the next module with its uh, solar rays deployed, uh, served as the early living quarters uh, and the control section of the Russian segment of the complex. And then on the back end with the scissor-shaped solar rays is the European Space Agency automa automated uh, transfer vehicle known as the Johannes Kepler. It's been uh, a part of the space station since uh, late February when it arrived delivering supplies to the station. It's one of several visiting vehicles uh, that the station hosts, including the Russian Soyuz uh, capsule which delivers crews to and from the station and also the progress supply vehicles. Here's another look at the uh, shuttle landing facility runway at the uh, Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Again, uh, all uh, preparations going well as the crew of Endeavour, Commander Mark Kelly, Pilot Greg Johnson, and Mission Specialist Roberto Vittori, Mike Fink, Drew Foistel, and Greg Shamatov uh, prepare to come home after uh, almost 16 days in orbit, delivering the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer. Endeavour, we do have a good config for the deorbit burn. 
Roger. Good config for the bus. Spacecraft communicator Butch Wilmer uh, readying up the word from Propulsion Systems Officer that uh, we are in a good configuration for the Dearbutt burn. Again, this will be a, a Dearbutt burn lasting 2 minutes and 38 seconds, providing a total change in velocity, slowing the shuttle down by 295.3 feet per second or just under 201 miles an hour. Standing by for the Dearbutt burn in 4, 3, 2, 1. Do you have a burn start? Endeavor speed now 14,000 miles an hour, or just over t Mach 20. Altitude is 42 miles. 1,546 miles to the landing site. Standing by for the first roll reversal in which uh, the shuttle will bank to the right. Three good auxiliary power units, three good fuel cells. All systems looking good as Endeavour re-enters the Earth's atmosphere and heading home for a landing at Kennedy Space Center. We're now in the area of terminal area energy management. Endeavour, we show you on energy approaching the hack. Your winds are now a slight tailwind, about three knots, nominal shoot. Copy the tailwind and nominal shoot. Uh, what's the crosswind looking like? Yeah, there's no crosswind at this time. It's all tail. Copy. Again, this is a view out the uh, pilot, Greg Johnson's heads-up display. Copy Endeavour, runway in sight. And a tally ho from the uh, flight crew of the runway. I can see it in sight now. Speed now 400 miles an hour. Altitude 2.2 miles or 110,000 feet. Speed. And there's a referred camera view of the uh, Space Shuttle Endeavour as it's coming in for a landing. Gear down and locked. Main gear touchdown. Drag chute deployed by Greg Johnson. Forward gear touchdown. And so after a journey of six and a half million miles, Endeavour landing in darkness, but illuminated by the ingenuity, dedication of every astronaut, scientist, engineer, flight controller, mechanic, and dreamer that helped it fly, the fleet's youngest ship completing its 120 Two millionth mile after its crew delivered an instrument to the International Space Station will sift through the cosmic darkness for years to come. Houston, Endeavour, we'll stop. 122 million miles flown during 25 challenging space flights. Your landing ends a vibrant legacy for this amazing vehicle that will long be remembered. Welcome home, Endeavour. Yeah, thank you, Houston. You know, the Space Shuttle is an amazing vehicle to fly through the atmosphere, hit it at Mach 25, uh, I mean, steer through the atmosphere like an airplane, land on a runway. It is really, really an incredible ship. On behalf of my entire crew, I want to thank every person that's worked for to get this mission going and every person that's worked on Endeavor. Um, it's sad to see her land for the last time, uh, but she really has a great legacy. Great words. Thank you, Mark, and we will meet you and your crew on 5-3. 5-3. And so the Space Shuttle Endeavour touching down at Kennedy Space Center uh, on time at uh, 1.35 a.m. Central Time, 2.35 a.m. Eastern. Commander Mark Kelly guiding it to a uh, very gentle touchdown on runway 15 at Kennedy Space Center Shuttle Landing Facility.
there are first looks of, uh, and, and now we have our first looks of, uh, Endeavor's crew. Led by Commander Mark Kelly, and Pilot Greg Johnson. Created first by NASA Administrator Charlie Bolden. Mission Specialist Mike Fink, wearing the baseball cap. European Space Agency Roberto Vittori. Drew Foistel. Making their way down the re essentially receiving greeting line. See Bob Cabana and then behind him, Associate Administrator for Space Operations Bill Gerstenmeyer. And Greg Shamatov. Shaking hands with Bill Gerstenmeyer now. See uh, Mike Leinbach, Shuttle Launch Director, and Thomas Ryder, the, the Director of Human Space Flight for the European Space Agency. And You guys can come up if you'd like, because I'm going to introduce Mark Kelly and his crew. We want to welcome them back after an incredible mission. And... Uh, Mark Kelly, you got it. Um, first, let me say, I know it's 3.30, 4 in the morning, so it's really late for everybody. It's actually about mid, we're wide awake, and it's about middle of the uh, day for us. Uh, it's great to be back here at the Kennedy Space Center. It's great to be bring Endeavor back in great shape. It looks like it's ready to go do another mission, but uh, this is going to be the last flight. Mission went great. We installed the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer, uh, ELC-3, so we have the station positioned to where over the next 10, 15, 20 years, it's got the spare parts it needs uh, to, to continue doing the science that is uh, so relevant today. Uh, AMS is already collecting data. We're pretty excited about that and looking forward to hearing some more about it. Uh, I really want to thank my crew members who did such a spectacular job on this flight. Uh, could not have done this without them. Uh, they all, every single one of them, just performed and our flawlessly. Commander, we want to thank him, too. So, so thanks for coming out. It's great to be back, and uh, have, a good, have a good morning. So long. <laughs>